Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, I would like to read an article entitled Law of the Sea, a contested watershed ruling. The 2016 arbitral award on the South China Sea has changed the dynamic of maritime dispute. The 2016 arbitral tribunal effectively dismissed China's 9 days land claim. When in 2016, the arbitral tribunal issues its watershed ruling the case between the Philippines and China, responses from the international community were lackluster. The Asian Maritime Transparency Initiative's arbitral support tracker, such as the eight government have publicly called for the tribunal ruling to be respected. 35 have made positive statement but stopped short of calling for it to be implemented and might have publicly rejected. Given the diplomatic and economic influence that China's can wield, it is arguably surprising that the number of repudiations of the tribunal award is not higher. From the outside, China refused to participate in the case, but the tribunal nevertheless found that it had to right to proceed, although the tribunal award is only binding on the parties to the case, the Philippines and China, it has clearly changed the international legal dynamic of regional maritime dispute and addressed but key uncertainties in the existing law of the sea. What the award of the arbitral tribunal did do was to effectively dismiss China's 9th S line. The arbitration, the arbitration case stemmed for the dispute resolutions provisions contained in Part 50 of the United Nations Conventions of the Law of the Sea or UNCLOS or the Convention. Accordingly, it could only address issues that related to the law of the sea and not the core of the South China Sea dispute. There is sovereignty of our dispute island. What the award of the arbitral tribunal did do was effectively dismiss China's 9 days line, ruling that the country's claim to historic right within this discontinuous line were extinguished, where they were incompatible with the right provider under UNCLOSE. The tribunal provided the first detailed international judicial interpretations of the regime of islands, including the notoriously problematic issue of distinguish between fully entitled island and mere rocks. This led to the finding that all this partly island and Scarborough Soul both claimed by China as part of their territory are legally rocks. An aerial view of Chinese development on Kinan Reef in the disputes partly islands currently controlled by China and claimed by the Philippines as part of Palawan. See 2015. The tribunal also found that China has violated the right of the Philippines in waters of its coast by interfering with Philippines fishing and petroleum exploration constructing artificial island and failing to prevent China's fishing activities. It ruled that China has caused severe harm to the coral reef environment and violated its obligation to preserve and protect fragile ecosystem and the habitat of depleted, threatened, and endangered species through its large-scale land reclamations and constructions of artificial island. Actions that had permanently destroy evidence of the natural conditions of the disputed features. It is increasingly clear that the majority of South China Sea littoral states base their claims on the tribunal award. This became evident in 2009 
when Vietnam alone and jointly with Malaysia made submissions to the UN Commission on the limits of the Continental Self or CLCS, provoking protests and counter-protests. Malaysia's December 2019 partial submission to the CLCS prompted a wave of diplomatic notes. From this exchange, it is clear that the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Vietnam all takes all take the view that the arbitration award represent an authoritative interpretation of international law. That the the South China Sea island are legally rock, and that China's China's nine test line claims are invalid. China has consistently and vociferously rejected the ruling, and there are no mechanism by which it can be enforced. This is hardly news, but the fact that states have increasingly referred to the tribunal ruling to back up their positions is significant. Both Indonesia and the Philippines made direct reference to be award in the, the in their diplomatic notes with respect to its decisions that none of this partly island generate exclusive economic zone or continental self entitlements while the consistent with its binding while the language contained in Vietnam's diplomatic note is entirely consistent with its finding. Moreover, extra regional players including the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, France, Germany and Japan also weighed into support and close the rule of law and the award. The 2016 award case therefore now underpin the maritime claims of the majority of the South China Sea littoral states as well as the perspective of extra regional players and had and has had a substantial impact on the international legal dynamic of South China Sea disputes. Of course, the key caveat here, here is that China has consistently and vociferously rejected the ruling and there are no mechanism by which it can be enforced. Nonetheless, the way what the award of the arbitral, arbitral tribunal is now embedded in the positions of states both within and beyond the South China Sea such as that its finding will not simply evaporate as readily as Beijing might wish. There is every indication that China will maintain not only its claim to sovereignty over all the disputes so China Sea Island, but to maritime areas within the nine test line as well. Fortunately and ominously, this clash of legal and special visions would seem to set the stage for ongoing frictions and incidents in the South China Sea as coastal states attempt to assert jurisdictions of their waters and marine resources while East China continues to maintain its claim within the nine test line. So that's all the article. Bye bye and see you on my next video.